Greetings, sisters and brothers in Christ. Today is Pentecost Day, and so I'm wearing my red. I'm out here in the wind. I had to find a little sheltered spot here on Brenton Point, but we remember the Holy Spirit is like this wind. And so our reading for today is the famous um, Acts chapter 2. And we begin our worship in the name of the one who created us, Jesus Christ, who redeems us, and the Holy Spirit, who comforts and sustains us and breathes that breath of life into us. Amen. Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? How is it that we hear each of us in our own native languages? All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, said, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your youth shall see visions, and your elders shall dream dreams. Even upon my servants, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. And the title of our message for this Pentecost Day is from that, this passage where God declares, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Let us pray. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. And so today is the day of Pentecost. The color is red for the fire, the flames of fire that appear on all of the disciples. And it says that Jews from every nation were gathered in Jerusalem because for Jews, the day of Pentecost, penta meaning five, 50 days, after Passover um, is the Feast of Pentecost, which for Jews, it's a barley festival, but also it commemorates Moses going up Mount Sinai and receiving the gift of 
the Ten Commandments. For Christians, um, this day of Pentecost, we're, we come out of Judaism, but the, it is about 50 days after Easter. After 40 days, Christ ascends, but he says, stay here until you are clothed with power from on high. And on this 50th day, he sends a new infusion, a powerful infusion of the Holy Spirit. Um, to strengthen and empower us and I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Um, the second thing that we Christians celebrate today on Pentecost is the birth of the church, the birthday of Christianity. Um, we, we credit Pentecost as being the church's birthday. Um, in just a couple of hours, I will be going to First Lutheran Church of East Greenwich, which I served as pastor for 26 and a half years, uh, until about a year and a half ago. Um, and that church today celebrates their 150th anniversary, which is a huge thing. Um, and I cannot help but think of that little band of Swedish immigrants who settled on Swede Hill in East Greenwich and began meeting in people's homes. They didn't even have a pastor for the first several years of their early beginning, but they gathered in homes and were filled with that power of the Holy Spirit. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, God declares. So today we celebrate 150 years for First Lutheran Church of East Greenwich. Yesterday at Church Beyond the Walls, the street church in, that meets in Burnside Park, Providence, which I serve as missioner, um, we had a rare event every year on past Pentecost. We invite people who've never been baptized to be baptized. And so yesterday we baptized um, a young man who um, is experiencing homelessness right now with his mother. They're sleeping outside. Um, but for many years, he's longed to be baptized. And so I've met with him over the past couple of months to plan his baptism day. And yesterday, he received the gift of God in the sacrament of holy baptism. And I'll never forget his radiant face. And after we lit his baptism candle and um, I anointed him and blessed him, the whole community burst into applause and he held up his candle high, triumphant, um, victorious that he now is uh, has this new birth in Christ through the gift of baptism and through the Holy Spirit. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, people from all walks of life. And so, in today's passage, um, and also in the Gospel for today, which is the end of the last paragraph of John 15 and the beginning of John 16, we didn't read that, but there are five different names given to the Holy Spirit that I want us to just focus on briefly. And as I mention these five different names or attributes of the Holy Spirit, I want you to think about which one speaks to you this day, right now, in your life. So in John, um, the end of John 15, and the beginning of John 16, it, Jesus speaks about the, I'm sending the Holy Spirit, he says, and he calls it the Spirit of Truth. The Spirit of Truth. And, um, and truth is a beautiful thing, but it is a very hard thing. Sometimes we, um, we don't want to see the truth in our lives, but we have to face these 
hard truths. And so um, does that word, the spirit of truth, speak to you in your life this day? Is there some hard truth that you need to face in your life in order to have that gift of new spiritual birth God desires for you at this time of Pentecost? That spirit of truth, hard truth, goes along with two other images that we saw in this reading from the book of Acts. The Holy Spirit as wind. And in fact, it says the disciples were gathered in this upper room. Many Bible scholars think this story is supposed to take place in the same upper room where they'd celebrated the Last Supper with Jesus and that they're still hidden away there um, in fear. And the Holy Spirit blows through this upper room it says as a mighty or the translation is actually like a violent wind now right now i'm in a little shelter in the rocks and i can feel a, a gentle breeze but it took a long time here at brenton point to find a sheltered place because in the rest of the whole point here the wind is raging and um, wind is like that. It can be violent. It can be a tornado. It can be a hurricane. Or it can be gentle and calm like a cool breeze on a hot summer day. But in the Pentecost story in Acts chapter 2, it says it was a mighty wind, a violent wind. And I think of... Um, of a poem I read which speaks about a wind that just tears through and knocks everything, uh, blows everything away that doesn't belong there, that's not really rooted. And so the spirit of truth has that hard side to it. This violent wind wants to blow through your life and mine and and kind of purge us of all those things that are extraneous that that are not serving our best interest and blow through us and tear those things away so that only what's deeply rooted only that god in us and those things of the spirit remain the third image of the holy spirit that we see today is fire um, and we see it in today's passage in these flames of fire that appear on all of the disciples' heads. Yesterday we saw that fire in the baptismal candle. So fire also can be this, um, this gentle thing, this um, warm, glowing thing, like a gathered around a campfire or uh, a cabin in the woods with... Uh, a fire in the in the fireplace in the hearth that brings warmth and coziness but if you've ever witnessed um, a forest fire or a house fire that just tears through some place and levels it fire also can have that double meaning it can be a, a positive image of calm cozy warm or it can be quite devastating. Um, and yet, once again, that spirit of truth perhaps wants to just set things on fire um, to burn away the chaff of our lives, to, to destroy those things that need to be destroyed in order for us to be born in a new spiritual way this Pentecost. And even as I baptized this man yesterday, the baptismal liturgy speaks to that. It speaks about in our baptisms, we die to our old selves, to our old way of life, so that we can rise with Christ to new life. So, spirit of truth, sometimes hard truth, wind, sometimes mighty or even violent, fire, sometimes destructive, 
but always to be um, constructive, to give us a new beginning, um, to get rid of those things, to help us die to those things we need to die to in order for us to rise with Christ, infused with this Holy Spirit, this gift of new life. And so we move now into the more um, positive um, images of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, the same word in Hebrew, ruach, uh, in Greek, pneuma, pneuma. Um, and uh, of course, biblically, the Holy Spirit is feminine. It's a she. Yesterday when I preached in Spanish, uh, in Spanish the word for spirit is El Espíritu Santo, which is a masculine. Um, but I said in Spanish how in the Bible the word for Holy Spirit is feminine. And one of the men in my audience couldn't believe that. And he, it really opened him to a whole new dimension of the Holy Spirit. And so the Holy Spirit, um, wind, the word means spirit, wind, but it also means breath. And um, that's the image that most powerfully speaks to me right now. I've been through some fire and devastation and hard truth, and now I'm in the place of pausing and taking a deep breath Sometimes in life we feel, um, yesterday at Church Beyond the Walls, people were saying and they feel like, where is God? One person said, where is God right now in my life? And I said, stop and take a deep breath. There is God within you, as close to you as your next breath. That spirit, that Holy Spirit of life breathes in you with every breath you take. It is that close to you, it is within you, empowering you to live in this new spiritual birth God longs to give you this Pentecost day. And then very related to that, sisters and brothers, is the fifth word, which is used in the gospel, where Jesus says, I'm going away, but I'm sending you this spirit, this Holy Spirit, this spirit of truth, this advocate, that's the word he uses, this advocate. And it comes out of the legal system as an advocate, as someone who defends your case, who stands by you, who protects you, stands for you, fights for you, helps your cause in this life. That's what the advocate does. Um, so sisters and brothers in Christ, this day, does that image of the Holy Spirit speak to you? Um, and Jesus speaks about how we can call out for help to this advocate and this advocate will be there for us, will um, speak for us, defend, protect, stand up for you and for me. So sisters and brothers on this day, as we celebrate um, the birth of the Christian faith, the birth of the church, as we celebrate the new life of baptism, as we celebrate the Holy Spirit, may she, the Holy Spirit, may she speak to you as the spirit of truth, as a mighty wind, as a fire that sets you on fire in your life, as that breath within you, as your advocate in your life, no matter what you're facing, the Holy Spirit wants to advocate, wants to stand 
by you. So sisters and brothers, remember, God declares, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. This Pentecost day, God pours out the Holy Spirit on you. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God look upon you with blessing and grant you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of that Holy Spirit. Amen.